Uh, Your Excellency um, Alamed Umut, State Minister of Women, Children and Youth at the Federal Republic of Ethiopia. Your Excellency Ambassador Thomas Kwesi Quartery, Deputy Chairman of the African Union Commission. Uh, Your Excellency Mamadou Diakite, Speaker of the Senate of Mali. Um, it's a pleasure to, to be invited here, ladies and gentlemen, to say a few words as big partners of, of this organization and this work. How we treat children uh, affected by armed conflict today has profound consequences for their futures as well as the futures of their countries. Protecting children today is not only the morally right thing to do, it's also helped prevent new and protected conflicts tomorrow. We are therefore glad to note all the progress mentioned by SRSD Gamba in the video right now on the fight against recruitment of child soldiers and increased attention to how children's rights are protected in recent peace agreements. At the same time, more than 350 million children remain affected by armed conflicts today, and we still witness a shocking disregard for the rules and principles of international humanitarian law manifested by violation and abuses against children in many conflicts around the world. We need to do much more to protect them. Recruitment and use of children in direct participation in conflict, mass abductions, sexual and gender-based violence, and in the horrible practice of sexual slavery, mainly targeting girls. In my uh, life as an diplomat and humanitarian practitioners, I have met a tremendous amount of child soldiers in Afghanistan, in Somalia, in Liberia, in Eastern DRC, in South Sudan. Um, wars today are fought by children. Children is the nuclear arms of, of the actual wars we see today. And it's, it's a terrible fact that, that I've come across in many decades of, of working in this area. It is important to remember in our daily work that children should always be treated primarily as victims. And the effective reintegration of children formerly associated with groups per perpetrating violent extremists must be a priority. It is not only in the best interest of these children themselves, it is also the best interest of society as a whole. Giving these young, exploited souls a second chance to restore to a restored future also means a second chance for a peaceful society that does not return to destruction and conflict. In this regard, protecting schools and fulfilling the human right to education, even amid conflict, are key in addressing the situation and building sustainable peace. During Sweden's term in the UN Security Council, the situation of children in armed conflict was one of our main focuses. We shared its working group on children in armed conflict and facilitated the adoption of several conclusions on countries where grave violations were observed. We are pleased to see that there is, <coughs> since has been significantly increased attention paid to children affected by armed conflict in the Security Council. But ambition inside the working group alone is not sufficient. The Council needs to deal with this agenda in its daily work. Action needs to be consistent. Here we look to our present colleagues in the current Security Council to continue our common work. During Sweden's presidency in the Council in July last year, the Security Council Resolution 2427 was adopted with a record number of 98 co-sponsors. The resolution will be integral to conflict prevention, child protection and sustaining peace. But the question is, how can we make sure that the resolution stays, uh, <coughs> becomes implemented and, and stays a reality? What actions need to be taken? I would like to make four suggestions. First, children's need, needs are often overlooked when peace is negotiated. Actors involved in mediation and peace processes need tools and practices, practical guidance to integrate child protection. A process to develop this was launched by UN Secretary General Guterres and Swedish Prime Minister Stefan Löfven and SRS Diamba that as we heard just recently in July last year. 
Second, the resolution sets out a framework for reintegration of children associated with armed forces or armed groups. Here, the new, new global coalition for reintegration will be key for the implementation. Third, the resolution recognizes that access for all girls and boys to education and health care, including mental health, in conflict is essential. We all need to step up our efforts to make sure this becomes a reality. Fourth and lastly, in November 2018, the working group of the Security Council visited South Sudan with the purpose to follow up the recommendations uh, earlier in 2018. I think this kind of experiences from the field visits like that one are ex essential and should happen more often, at least once a year. From a Swedish perspective, we are proud to keep up the work in addressing the situation for children in armed, armed conflicts, including sponsoring uh, important conferences and meetings like this, uh, as a close partner to the African Union and as part of the group of friends here in Addis, we will continue to raise concerns on behalf of children in armed conflicts and to support actors working for prevention and redress to violation survivors. We are glad that so many of you made it here today and I thank you all for listening.